So hello, Father, and uh, thanks for joining me today on uh, Coffee with Father Bob. And we are talking to you. And tell us, first of all, your name, please, and where you are from. Well, uh, hello to you as well, Father. It's always fun to use the common greeting. Um, my name is Father Daniel Swartz. Uh, I'm a priest of the Diocese of Columbus, but I'm currently serving in California. Uh, so I was originally from St. Agatha's Parish in Columbus. The reason I'm in California is I'm with the 1st Marine Division, 2nd Battalion 1st Marines. So I'm a priest uh, assigned to a Marine Infantry Battalion. So I'm all the way out here with the Archdiocese, the military, looking after our men and women. So in a way you have a vocation within a vocation right now. Very much so. Uh, I still wear a lot of uniforms. They just tend to be of a different color. Yeah, yeah it does definitely look very different. So, um, Father, tell us a little bit about your own vocation story, if you would. Of course. Um, well, my, it was a bit roundabout. I suppose the Marines kind of led into the priesthood. Uh, when I was in college, I was actually looking to be a Marine officer. And I realized that, uh, obviously through prayer and um, doing some mission work abroad, I, I was in Europe and uh, in parts of India, uh, that everything that I was putting on the Marine Corps and nothing, nothing at all against the Marines. I, I absolutely love being a priest for them, but things like um, the idea of a way of life of serving others, the idea of sacrifice, um, the purpose, the mission, all of these things were found all the more full uh, in what the Lord was putting on my heart uh, and fulfilled in the priesthood. Right. Uh, so my initial fascination with, um, a warrior's life with a soldier's life uh, that I was putting on the Marine Corps was actually found all the more fully um, in, the, in the Catholic priesthood. And God does that a lot. Like he uses what's initially attractive to show us something greater about himself. So that's very true for me. That's wonderful. That's great. So um, you were, you went to college first and then mm -hmm. you went to seminary. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. A uh, little bit of a break in there to do some mission work. But yeah, I, I was a, yeah. uh, I had no plans when I went to college to actually be a priest. That wasn't in the works. Um, obviously, that came around later, but yeah. not initially. I think it's good for people to know because sometimes people think that, you know, it's a decision you have to make perhaps as you're leaving high school. And yet oh, no. the reality is, you know, Father Ed Shekina, who's our parochial vicar here, is in his 40s. He was a late vocation. Um, you, the Lord you, took a different path for you as well, you know, you, and, and that was fine too. So it's not like it's a hard decision early in life that all of a sudden you either, it's either make or break. So it's good for them to know. Yeah, so. it's not at all. Um, and I find that he actually returns, the Lord returns us to things in, in a deeper way. Like for me, the great irony is, um, I think sometimes we take God too seriously. I'm like a practical joke to the Almighty. Here I was thinking about the Marines and I had to struggle like, oh, I have to give up the Corps in order to become a priest. And then he sends me right back into the Marine Corps. Uh, and there's no timeline on that. If, he's, if it's a vocation, if he's calling us, well, he's eternal. He's always calling. So there's no, he's not, he doesn't operate by such strict timelines as we do, so right. to speak. Yeah, that's wonderful. And um, are you still there? I am. Um, can okay. you see me? I, all I'm seeing is the word I, oh, there he is. <laughs> oh. I suppose I just got a call. I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry. Um, so what would you say to any young man who's questioning, you know, how do I discern a vocation? What, should, what are the signs I should be looking out for? Are there things I should, should specifically be doing? Yes, uh, you have to pray. Um, if, if there's no prayer involved, then you run a very high risk of choosing something that, uh, uh, of entertaining a vocation in the wrong way. Um, and it's the same as dating. I mean, it's, there's a right way to go about it and there's a wrong way to go about it. And it's the same, it's the same thing. Um, so what I would say to that is that prayer has to come first. And then also, um, as St. Ignatius would say, St. Ignatius of Loyola, again, a good soldier who became a priest, uh, is you have to kind of weigh the spirits. Is this something that's reoccurring in my life? Mm. Is it something that's um, whenever it kind of bubbles to the surface in my thoughts and in my emotions, is that, is that something that just seems to come and fade away? Or has it been reoccurring time and time again? Because God will create a kind of line or spiritual momentum in our mm -hmm. life. 
And that's what I noticed. I'm like, okay, this appeared a little bit in high school. And then I got distracted. It came up in college again, but then I got interested in my own things. But it kept coming up to the point where I, when I entered seminary, I had no idea. that if I, I was like, in fact, I went there to figure out that I wasn't supposed to be a priest. As soon as you tell me no, I said, I will leave. But I had to give him a shot. And it gets to a point where, you know, you know, you know, I got to propose to the girl, so to speak. And so watch the line. And what helps us be perspective of that momentum is our attachment to God's will. That's prayer. Right. Uh, and the, uh, in the sacraments as well. Um, I, I would love that in with prayer. Oh, that's great advice. Thank you. So um, how long will you be in the military for? No idea. Uh, <laughs> so we have this wonderful thing in the military called our EAS which is when we're expected to leave. And mine just has nine, 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 nine on it because they didn't know what to put. Uh, so it's just kind of a string of numerals representing that, uh, I guess, my, uh, representing Christ's fidelity to the church. So it's kind of a blank check. Um, right now I'm locked in for a minimum of five years. Uh, but as they say in any part of the military, take it one deployment at a time. Right. So who knows? I'm having a great experience with it right now. There's a, there's a great need, uh, as scripture tells us, like the, the harvest is bountiful. Um, but th there might come, uh, there might come a time when the Lord calls me back or, uh, my obedience to the Bishop, he needs to call me back. And, uh, I, I'm ready for that come what may. Uh, and I also recognize that I'm a young priest and a young chaplain. So I try to listen to other voices of counsel, um, about what I should do and, help keep that in stride because this is more, it's more of a marathon than I suppose a race, uh, but I'll always be a priest of Columbus. Um, yeah. So there'll come a time when I come home. Yeah. And we'll be happy to have you back. Oh, very much so. I miss, oh my goodness. It's uh, things like they don't know how to eat peanut butter out here. They just, there's Buckeyes and just, oh my goodness. They're, they're totally missing out on an untapped market. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> and of course the OSU Buckeyes as well. Yeah, there we are. There we are. Also in terms of branding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for talking with us today. We really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. And, and happy Feast of St. Joseph, if I'm not mistaken. It is indeed. Thank you. Happy to you. All right. Blessings, brother. Yeah.